Hello and welcome to Creative Conversations, a podcast that highlights the work of West Cork women in the arts. In this series, local artists and writers will share their creative journeys, their inspirations and nuggets of wisdom for aspiring creatives. I hope you enjoy. In this second episode of Creative Conversations, we take you along to Swerve Gallery in Skibbereen, where we speak to two artists, Mitch Marnie and Caroline Boyfield, about their new creative projects. We talk about their creative and collaborative art and writing journal, coined during lockdown, called Swerve, their creative journeys, collaboration as artists, and their exciting future endeavours. I am joined um, today, well I suppose I'm joining them in Swerve Gallery um, on 8 Cork Road. So I'm with um, Mitch Marnie, Um, she's a local writer and artist. And she's recently set up a magazine of writing, art, um, interviews and photos. Um, this was a lockdown project um, and it's named Swerve. And she's the editor and designer of the magazine. Um, and yeah, I'd love to, you know, get a, get an insight into what inspired the magazine because it's, it's brilliant. I've really enjoyed reading it. Um, and we're also joined by the lovely Caroline Boyfield, who is the artist in residence here at Swerve. So Caroline is the first artist in residence, but she was also the editor at large for Swerve in France. Um, so it's it's an international project. Um, so it's it's brilliant, and um, yeah, it promotes collaboration between like lots of creatives internationally. So um, yeah, it's lovely to talk to you both. Um, so this question is awful, but would you like to introduce <laughs> yourselves and? Um, Tell me where you're from and what your connection to West Cork is. So um, I might start with you, Mitch. Oh, okay. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I was born in Hong Kong. My mum's Eurasian, so I'm a real hodgepodge. I'm partly Chinese, partly Portuguese, a bit of Czech in there, for whatever reason, and Indian. And my dad is British with Irish ancestry, so it's very Irish on one side and just this real mishmash on the other. <laughs> so very <laughs> odd. Um, connection with Cork. Well, um, I came here first of all when I was an art student uh, with a friend and just absolutely fell in love with the place, whether it was because I felt Irish, because I, you know, I had this ancestry, I don't know. I mean, I don't think of myself as Irish, obviously, because I'm not, because I was born in um, Hong Kong. But I just love the landscape, just absolutely blew me away. And I just wanted to come and live here, you know, the usual, really, with any tourist who comes to West Cork, it's like, oh my God, I love it, I want to come here. Um, but I did, end up, I did end up coming to live here for a year, I absolutely loved it. Um, but unfortunately my dad died so I had to go back to London and kind of ended up staying even though I wanted to come back and then one day I just woke up about seven years ago looked in the mirror and just thought right if I don't go, get back to West Cork I'm gonna get I'm going to be really ill I had, it was one of those moments of true absolute clarity wow. that just made me just drop everything and come back and it's the best thing I've done for a long long time wow. so that's my connection that's amazing yeah I suppose the lifestyle compared to London so oh. different and slow pace and... well I love London and I do mm. miss it but when I first moved to London, it was a very different city. It's now become okay. very monstrous. It's very hard. You have to have a lot of money. It's very mm-hmm. hard to live a creative life. So, so while I do love it, I'm really glad I'm here. I've, yeah. got, I've got headspace here. That's how I feel about it. Yeah. West Court gives you a lot of headspace. It's That's great. That's amazing. And how is the um, like creative process different, like uh, inspiration-wise, living in a big city to a, a small well, community? I've sort of just been, I've been working on a sort of series of drawings, which I kind of continued on in a way. Mm-hmm. But I just think being in the landscape does change things. It kind of makes, I think it's all, it's all unconscious. I don't think you necessarily think, oh, I'm, I'm going to start doing landscapes or anything. But I think the landscape does feed into your work. Mm-hmm. In fact, I'm yeah. trying to get away from that because I don't want to do landscapes, <laughs> actually. But I know that it is. You know, yeah, I've done stuff that I think, you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. And um, Caroline, hello. Hi. How are you? Um, I'm very well, thank you. I might ask you to introduce yourself as well and tell us where you're from and how how West Cork is treating you for your artist in residency. Oh, well, uh, West Cork is treating me very, very well. Um, I was born in Wales. I've got a um, half Scottish, half English father and uh, a Breton uh, mother. Um, and as a child, I lived in uh, lots of different countries, actually. We moved all over the the world so I spent some time in France some time in England Um, apparently as a baby I spent some time in Dublin as well Mm. Uh, but we then when I was about five or six we moved to West Africa and lived out in West Africa for about eight or nine years Um, so a lot of my formative years were were uh, in Africa too Um, I first came to uh, West Cork last year I've always felt um, 
because I, I feel that uh, having travelled a lot, that the affinity I have got actually is with those Celtic roots, the Scottish and the and the Welsh and the mm -hmm. Breton, uh, and I always felt at home in Brittany, and I I hadn't. Uh, I'd always been drawn to coming to Ireland. I uh, came briefly to Dublin in the late 90s um, and then Mitch uh, we'd been keeping in touch uh, and after the pandemic obviously we'd, everybody was desperate to sort of start <laughs> moving again. I thought well, I know what I'll go over to Ireland and visit Mitch and she was actually moving from, um, she was in Ross Carberry um, and she said well if you want to see the house in Ross Carberry come over before I move. <laughs> um, so I did and I absolutely fell in love with the landscape and oh. um, there's something here that is just really really special um, for artists and creatives. I think my, my daughter described it very succinctly and said that the veil is very thin and there's something between um, that you, you almost instantly into a poetic space yeah. and I think you feel it. So I love that. That's really, very um, true. Yeah, there's, there's space to, to think and seek inspiration as well. So that's lovely. Um, and your connection to each other dates back oh, quite a while as well. Of years. <laughs> <laughs> Last century. The, oh, amazing. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> um, so you went to art college together? Yeah. Um, yeah. And did you just hit um, off straight away? Or? Yeah, I think, uh, for me, yes. I mean, I, th I thought that Mitch was um, a really interesting person, mm -hmm. you know, with a, with a strong personality. And I was drawn to. Um, you know, as a, as a young woman, sort of obviously identifying, um, trying to build your own identity. And we were early feminists, you know, so mm -hmm. this was in 1979 when we were doing our foundation yeah. course. And, um, you know, we were chucking away everything that had gone before and trying to sort of make a, a new mark. And uh -huh. uh, so we were very much, um, you know, Dr. Martins and, uh, <laughs> and um, sort of baggy jumpers, ripped jeans with stained with paint and uh, you know we yeah. were, um, <laughs> and uh, we weren't going to didn't want to be noticed or, or or judged by our sort of feminine wiles or feminine charms we were going to do it on merit and uh, you know it was very much like that so yes yeah. yeah, so I think I, I, I saw a kindred spirit in that respect a oh. strong a strong woman a strong personality and uh, uh, it drew me to it drew me to Mitch yeah in that way yeah, Karen's very much a rebel. I thought oh, because she's such a rebel. <laughs> I was so impressed actually by her rebelliousness. It was great. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, because working with um, like friends, and especially I think there's something really special about female friendships in like a yeah. creative space. And like I've worked with my friends on different creative projects as well, like podcasting, or I did a market over lockdown with my friend where we like she made jewellery and I recycled old flower pots and stuck oh, shells great. in them and things. But it's there's something special like about that non judgmental yeah. kind of bond that you have. Mm. But how do you balance that and like getting work done and, you know, having a friendship outside of, you know, swerve? Um, well for me I think it's about having it, it, you do need to to, to set boundaries yeah. actually and decide okay well, that th there there will be things that are jointly um, worked on mm -hmm. and then things that are sort of our own work or our own projects and so on so I think it's it's good to have um, yeah to be clear about your own identity actually yeah. and then um, to know that I mean it's great to be able to have that creative partnership as well because it's it's um, it's a really positive Force because being an artist, you actually spend a lot of time on your own, and sometimes yeah. you you can't see the wood for the trees, and you don't actually know whether you're going in the right direction or if it's got any value at all. And actually mm -hmm. having those conversations um, is, is is good as well. Mm -hmm. But also keeping your own own identity. So I think Swerve is very much Mitch's um, baby, yeah. Um, and I see my role as um, the editor at large. So I. I might have an idea or a project that I bring to Mitch and say, well, what do you think to that? Or what yeah. do you think to this artist or to this writer and so on? Um, and uh, But th that project, whatever I'm working on, might also interact with another you mm -hmm. know, group of people. Or, yeah. So that, that there's fluidity in it all, but it all feeds, you know, it's it's just the tapestry, rich tapestry of life, really. Yeah. And but, but boundaries are quite important, probably, yeah. yeah. 100%. Mm -hmm. And that leads us nicely on to Swerve. 
So, <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, as the editor and creator of Swerve, would mm-hmm. you like to, to tell us about Swerve and what inspired you to create Yeah, the sure. Um, the inspiration for Swerve was this absolutely fantastic magazine that came out in, I think, the early part of the um, 20th century called Verve. It was produced in um, Paris and really it gave equal weight to, to the writers and artists of that time. Um, I found a copy in a, 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 in a in a bookshop in Museum Street in London, instantly fell in love with it. And I was so just entranced. Uh, he actually gave me 50 quid off because he knew how much I loved it. He was so nice because I couldn't afford it actually. So I, I didn't have any money. I actually had to pay quite a lot of money for this book because it was just so fantastic. I was just, you, know, you could see how much I loved it. Anyway, so um, I've always had this, My it, it is a treasured possession. So. I thought, God, wouldn't it be great to do a magazine like that? Thinking, well, never, it's never going to happen, you know. But, but it was like this thing in the back of my mind. And then um, in lockdown, I joined um, a writing, a really great writing group, actually, headed by Matthew Geden, the poet, um, with this very disparate bunch of people. And we, and the writing was so, so brilliant in this course. And I thought, well, it's a real shame if it just disappears yeah. after this. And I thought, well, why don't we put a magazine together? So did that practically on my kitchen table because you know I, I had made a magazine before for another project but I'd never really done that with other people's work mm-hmm. and it's a huge responsibility that it is actually quite nerve-wracking because mm-hmm. you feel so responsible for other people's work you know um, but it went really well and it was picked up by the um, West Court Literary Festival they gave us a lovely launch very enthusiastic and it was almost kind of um, it was like by, by magic almost you know yeah. I couldn't believe it. it was happening and um so that was great. That made me think, well, actually, this, this has got legs. You yeah. Know, we, can, we can do this. Um, and really, Swerve is a magazine that seeks to give a platform to young and emerging Irish writers along, and, and artists, of course, um, alongside more established names. So Swerve 2 is very much that. I mean, Swerve 1 was really an anthology of writing. Mm-hmm. Um, I put it together very quickly, in fact, with my own images. And Swerve 2 is much more broad-based. We got a lovely article by the Albers resident artist, William Bowl about his work, the Glandor Landscape, the Albers Foundation, it's lovely. Um, a really great, well, Caroline's lovely project up at Fro. She was the yeah. artist in residence here, but um, we arranged for her to go to a, an organic farm in Fro, and you know the, the result, resulting series of works are just fantastic. They're in, on show in the gallery now, and it's the project is in the magazine. Also, I'm very interested in artist-writer um, collaborations. So I arranged for um, a sculptor in London to meet a writer in Newcastle. They, and they just hit it off immediately. It was great. And Charlotte, Charlotte Malik was the sculptor and Hannah Hall was a writer. And Charlotte has produced this amazing series of soft sculptures that I'm really hoping to show as, a, as a, an installation in the gallery next year. Um, and just just really, I've just, well, I, I know a lot of interesting people, you know, like Caroline, for example, um, <laughs> and just brought as many people together as I could. Um, and the submissions uh, portal, we got some really good work in, actually. It was great. It was very, very exciting to see this new work coming in, yeah. you know. There's so. no, because it's it's such an amazing read. Like, I haven't even got through all of it yet. Oh, I'm glad you think Because so. I want to enjoy each piece, yeah, yeah. you know, because you're taking on not to sound cringe, but on like a lot of creative journeys. Oh, I'm, glad, I'm so glad you yeah, said that. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's beautiful. I would highly recommend it. But um, yeah, I was just interested in how you got all the creatives together. So you say you just n- know a lot of creatives. And then... yeah, um, yeah, and you do meet people. I mean, if you start yeah. doing something, I, 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 hadn't, I hadn't written before lockdown. Mm-hmm. And um, I met a lot of people through the writing group. Um, I... I I, I, Hannah was somebody. I was she was a prize winner um, uh, uh, by the. Uh, it was a competition run by the book edit, so I knew her from that. Um, and I think that when you start doing something, th- things happen as if by magic. Yeah. That's the really odd thing. I mean, <clears throat> things just have happened. You know, people yeah. have kind of have turned up in my life, and you think, God, this is amazing because yeah. um, you know you just kind of put it out there in a way, and things start to happen. Yeah, uh, organically. It's I really really that. interesting. Yeah. It's so interesting when you put out one almost your like intention or idea yeah. and then it lines up yeah yeah it's the most satisfying yeah. thing oh, yeah it's amazing it is amazing <laughs> it's and like people, it's meant to be yeah yeah and people are very interested in swerve so i get you know quite a lot of interest and you know people want to know how to get in it and mm-hmm. um you know but what i do love about the magazine is you know you read something and then the images give you pause they're lovely in mm. themselves but they give you a lovely pause in between each written piece and they yeah. somehow they create a sort of um the sort of third third thing that's going on yeah, isn't just writing another it element just, yeah. yeah exactly I think it's uh, it really works well I, I've made it so of course I'm a bit biased no <laughs> it, it really does um my mom is actually reading it as well at oh the moment. really oh great <laughs> yeah, she's enjoying yeah um 
So yeah, I was going to ask you like your favorite descriptions or something that resonated with you, but it's okay if you can't answer. I'm going to leave. Um, I, I I I just can't. I, I can't answer that question That's because okay. I think they're all brilliant. Yeah. I'm going to hand over to Caroline now because she can say it without upsetting anybody. Yeah, if there's something that really <laughs> resonated with you, or you know, to give people a taste of what's in there. Yeah. If there's a quote or anything that's like you know really yeah. resonated with you. Um. I, well, for, for me in Swerve One, um, I think what when I came over in um, in twenty two and, and first saw that first proof of, of Swerve One it, it, for real, um, I I loved uh, Mitch's graphics. So I think that holistically the visuals and Mitch's contribution as a visual artist to the mm -hmm. publication is is a real plus. Oh, so that is, is is something that I would say um, made me feel like I wanted to be part of it as well. So um, I. I I really wanted to get Swerve over to France as soon as possible, so I invited Mitch to an, uh, for an exhibition that I curated in France in February, uh, very much with the idea that Swerve would be launched in France as well. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, some of uh, of the artists that I introduced Mitch to in France are also contributors into Swerve too. So that yeah. that was the first kind of link. So I'm I'm a little bit obviously I have got. Um, a, a little bit of a bias towards those artists <laughs> yeah. because they were people that I, that, that I, uh, that I liked the work. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as Swerve One, I think that in terms of the writing, I loved, if I was just to pick a poem, uh, Mona Lynch's Hysterectomy Tree, which really, really, I think with writing, it touches a core. Mm -hmm. So all the writing is good, but the, I, th I think you always bring inevitably a personal experience to something and you take out, uh, you know, something actually reaches. So yeah. that was one that I, I really loved. Um, I love Mitch's writing in the um, in Rosa Mundi. Um, and to me, that's very much um, a, a visual artist's poet, poetry or poem. Mm -hmm. um, there's something very... Um, it's very immediate in the way that it conjures images um, yeah. in the same way as you might go to a painting and, and it's got that immediate sort of uh, feeling or yeah. response so I like that um, because I think poetry just it touches the senses rather than the mind it's not something that you um, you can necessarily analyze but somehow mm, it just gets it. it seeps yeah. into you yeah mm -hmm. um, and then uh, as far as short stories I really like Jennifer Redmond's uh, short story um, because again she's describing smell throughout that story and I think mm. that's a really unusual thing to do with yeah. words to actually describe smell mm -hmm. um, so I really like that one in Swerve 2 um, I was re really taken with uh, Paul Timmy's uh, short story Black Peach um, which is a really moving uh, account of his father um, and uh, who can't eat as a result of a, 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 an operation and who's or stroke possibly and it's really, really yeah, it's moving. moving. It's mm. really moving. Um, and then I love, uh, for, for a very different move, I, I love, mood, I love Catherine uh, Ronan's poetry. It's really sassy and sort of... <laughs> she's great at reading it too. She's so mm. good at okay, reading it. Okay, so yeah. that's, uh, that's a poem called Hot Fox. Um, and as you said, the, the, the actual publication is so rich mm. that when I arrived here last week, Mitch had left a, a copy on my bed, and I thought, "Oh, I was, <laughs> I was all excited!" Yes. So I sort of opened it, and it's literally from the the, the feel of the paper to the turning of the mm. pages. Everything is a really sensuous experience, yeah. and you want to take time in reading yeah. the different parts. So, um, so if any, it, but it's it, nice to get a taste from you of you know what to expect in there, and like there is a lot of evocative descriptions, and um, there's a a feminist who's like 22, 23 in London, Florence Given, I don't know if oh, you yeah. know her, and she says like delicious to describe everything and I just oh, think there's a lot of delicious nice. writing. Lovely. You're absolutely right, yeah. I think it's very sensual. Because you can it's really a... feel it and you're mm. like in, you're in the moment with the writer almost and the artist, yeah. so yeah. Can I just touch on the French aspect? Rosa Mundi yeah, is about uh, Toulouse Lautrec actually, the French artist, but actually mm -hmm. I think Caroline's role is absolutely essential in that we're both Brits, we're very, mm -hmm. very anti-Brexit. And for me, it is so essential to maintain those cross-cultural um, links, yeah. especially for us. I mean, I just think it's a tragedy what's happening mm -hmm. in the UK. And um, they, people love it in France, don't they? they and do. Caroline is just so brilliant at, at um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, promoting it. Yeah. And if there's a real link now between us and the artists and writers in France. It's it's, it is actually amazing. And I love it. And so, in fact, 
we're trying to get more works in translation you know a, yeah. a Gaelic Breton um, so any, well actually any language I'm very very yeah. interested in getting work in simply to make those connections you know yeah um, Verve, uh, the magazine that I was inspired by, mm -hmm. um, and the one I got, was an issue that came out of Paris um, as it was being uh, just before the Germans invaded during the war. Okay, it's a celebration of French culture, actually. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, so it's kind of it's kind of interesting that you know we, there is a strong French connection, and I just thought how amazing you know it's a celebration of French culture in the face of totalitar totalitarianism and war. And Swerve One came out during the, you know, Ukrainian one. The mm. same thing is happening. Yeah. It, it, it was tragic, but um, there was sort of interesting um, yeah. it, it's correlations. A, an interesting, like political element yeah. to mm, it. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I think uh, poetry, actually, any any poetry or art, you know, if you're doing it uh, against the backdrop of um, real, dif you know, real mm. difficulty. Actually, it's, it's it's an act of defiance, actually, because yeah. you come up against so many struggles, particularly if you're self-funded. And Swerve is entirely self-funded, mm -hmm. um, and so it is. It, it's it is a a real work of passion and and uh, belief in the power of poetry and art to to make a difference. Yeah. Um, but as far as the the Brexit thing, yeah, I think we, it was interesting that Mitch moved to Ireland and I moved. To France roughly at the same time there was something about let's get off this island of, of, of England yeah. it's uh, yeah and you know keeping that European dimension is mm -hmm. and that world dimension actually yeah. is very cooperating I, together yeah, yeah. And, and I, I do see that it's a publication across borders as well mm. I, I definitely think that um, art and poetry do have the power to transcend borders yeah so. I love that yeah that's all special I have to just um, correct that because we do get a bit of funding from Cork County Arts actually. Oh yes, that's true. Yeah. Um, it is mostly funded by me at the moment, but we did get a really good bit of funding that paid for half the printing. Um, okay. So I just need yeah. to correct yeah. that. Yeah, no I problem. <laughs> <laughs> we do need to, no, to thank our sponsors. Yeah. And also actually, what's really nice about Swerve is that, um, and the, the, the quality of the, the printing and the paper, as Caroline says, mm. um, my printer actually is Inspire and Skibbereen. Oh, very And good. it's just so nice to be able to just literally a 10 minute, 10 minute walk away mm. to walk in to see Finton and discuss it. Yeah, uh, it's very, so It's nice. very special actually. Yeah. You know, to have a, a printer that's so local, I really want to keep that. That, you yeah, because people are sending stuff off to Poland. No, it's great that you're where. supporting local. But well. um, yeah. you know, um, mm. and they're very supportive of us actually. So that's great. You know, it's a yeah. really, it's a nice relationship. And you know, um, I'd like to keep it because yeah. it, it, I think it's unusual that nowadays you can actually walk to, walk into your printer from. Yeah, from, you know. no, it's lovely. Yeah, yeah, so it's nice. great. Yeah, um, yeah. Thanks for explaining the international element as well because I was going to ask you about that. And um, I suppose I'd just love to hear about like future swerves and future projects oh, that wow. you're both working on. Um, okay. Well, this year was a real uh, a departure for us. We were work, work, working at the Skibbereen Arts Festival. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. It's a fantastic festival that really punches above its weight. It's just such a great festival. Been very supportive of what we're trying to do here. Um, we had a lovely reading at Annie Mays to launch the magazine. It went really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, sketch crawls caroline's organized sketch crawls yeah. that's gone really well it's such um, a cool idea the sketch crawl actually yeah Where do you want to talk about it um well that's come out of um um urban sketches i've been an urban sketcher f uh, since probably about 2017 i joined my yeah. first group in stoke-on-trent when i was still in the uk um but urban sketches is a wonderful international movement of mm -hmm. basically drawing the world a day, you know, a drawing at a time, a moment at a time, and there's so many chapters all over the world that you know, if you were to compile all those drawings, you'd get a wonderful picture yeah. of, of lots and lots of different countries and different That's places amazing. and so on. Mm. Um, so I just thought, um, and it's it's the idea behind it is as well, people come together at all sorts of different levels. Mm -hmm. There's no judgment about drawing just. The only thing is just participate and draw. Yeah. And, uh, so we're just um, all there together. At the That's same time. it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I thought. There was a festival here, and I've, ne I've never actually done it in, in this way mm -hmm. via a festival. But I thought, oh, why not just do a sketch crawl? Yeah. Because um, I normally do we do that through uh, our local urban sketches groups. So um, and and it's been really successful. Yeah, so yeah, um, Declan, um, the festival organizer, ran with it and said, "Great, we'll put it in the program." So I thought, oh, brilliant. Um, so um, yeah, it, it, that was really really nice. Yeah, you've really um, thrown your yourself into the. 
you know that's it it made the me f- festival and you exactly. did lots of events and yeah yeah made me it's feel great. like I, I, I was part of that local community yeah, for, no, it's for great. that period of time so yeah yeah brilliant so that was one of the events that you did and yeah. then um yeah what do you hope well, to achieve next well um <laughs> I've started it. I opened the gallery this this year. What I'd really like to do is show experimental, um, you know, uh, experimental work that does not necessarily ha- have a home in a commercial gallery. Uh, young and emerging artists, small works on paper, just stuff that doesn't have a um, an obviously commercial outlet because there are a lot of places that sell work that you know does sell, but mm-hmm. there's also a lot of really good work that doesn't that doesn't sell but needs to be shown. Yeah. So, that's what I'm trying to do with the gallery. It's it's you know stuff that isn't obviously commercial, but it's really interesting and vibrant, and also young you know giving giving young artists their first one person show. I think that's really important. Yeah. Um, I'm I've started the artist artist in, artist slash writer in residence program. That's going to continue. Mm-hmm. And what I'm hoping to do is maybe workshops, but also um, uh, informal readings. There's a big attic space up here, so I've, I'm. <gasps> Provisionally calling it the Lit Lounge. Yeah. Um, you know, come and show your work. You know, bring a cushion. We'll have a few <laughs> drinks. You know, just very informally show your work. Yeah. Um, it'd be brilliant to have something like well, that. Well, especially in the winter, I thought. Yeah. So there's loads going on in the summer. I thought it'd be great to have like a mini sort of winter it's festival. Really cozy. You know, and, yeah. And get people up there yeah. reading their work and have a, maybe have an exhibition downstairs. And I'd love to do workshops actually. So um, that's that's the plan. We're going to be working with 49 North Street as well, which is great. I'm very, very excited about that. Moza Jacobs, is, she's a great supporter of the magazine. So we're going to be doing something with Moza and Kevin at 49 North Street. Amazing. Um, I did the Sundoku Art Fair in Dublin, which was great. So I managed to bring Swerve to Dublin, which was oh, really exciting. So that's, uh, yeah, that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, ho- hopefully do that next year. So um, yeah, and excited. The most exciting thing is that um, I'm, Caroline's created this huge project called Maritime, mm. oh, yes. which we're, yeah. we're partnering in. I, mm. I'm, I, Swerve's involved, but really it's Caroline's project, so I'll um, hand over um, to Caroline. Well, the, the idea, I think the idea was to continue on, on, on this um, this link between mm-hmm. Brittany and, and Ireland initially, and to, to build on that. Um, so I've, um, I've p- worked, I'm working with uh, three other artists, visual artists in Brittany, and we are trying to get, well, I'm, I'm working on funding, a funding application uh, for a big residency project in, uh, in West Cork uh, next year. So Amazing. bringing four uh, Breton artists to work with three or four Irish artists in collaborative work. So we're going to, we're, we're partnering up with Sample Studios in Cork um, and also with uh, West Cork Art Centre, Ilin. Oh. Um, they're offering us, very generously offering us uh, some um, studio space, Amazing. so that'll be great. Um, and putting together an itinerary for our artists when, we, when we're when we here. Um, so the, the, the overall arching theme is maritime, but in a really, really sort of, a broad sense so it could be um, one of our um, artists for example uh, is uh, the director of um, uh, Centre du Livre d'Artistes en Bretagne so basically he creates small editions of very very beautiful um, books art and um, artist and writer collaborations mm-hmm. and he is working has been working over a number of years on um, the idea of the island and uh, ins- insularity Okay. Uh, yeah. And he's created books in different languages, um, and now he wants an Irish writer. So that's going that's to be amazing. one of the one of the uh, collaborations. Yeah. Um, another um, group of artists is working with the idea of uh, the stamp uh, as an object that basically exists in transit between countries. Yeah. Wow. So that idea of travel. Um, so uh, w- one of the artists is a, is a printmaker. Uh, so I'm going to try and partner up with uh, court printmakers to to offer perhaps a collaborative workshop there. Um, another artist is a photographer, and uh, so um, and there's then so much yeah, so there's lots of collaborations, yeah. and, and mm. the great thing that comes out of that, I think, will be it enriches everybody's mm. um, cultural experience. I think the yeah. artists come away with new ideas, with um, just new new beginnings, and suddenly there's collaborations perhaps for an artist's book or for yeah. an exhibition or et cetera. So it, it just leads into the future then. Yeah. Um, so I just want to set up a structure where the artist feels supported mm-hmm. um, and the collaborations are in place and mm-hmm. that can then happen. And then the yeah. magic happens afterwards when. Yeah, that's such a brilliant idea. And I love that 
you know, Swerve is slightly involved and you were involved with Swerve, it's been nice. Um, no, it's great, actually. Yeah, that you're still collaborating yeah. together on, on your projects. Mm. And, well, yeah. we're going to devote um, the... Well, I don't like to work with themes normally. I think it's, it's you know, I prefer to leave everything open-ended. Okay, yeah. Um, but we're actually going to have a theme for, for, for Swerve 3, which will be Maritime. So, okay. you know, it would be interesting to see what, what comes up yeah. as a result of that, actually. That's really cool. And we're going to be publishing work in Breton, uh, French, Gaelic and English. So yeah, there's lots, it's lots of different Half of it's going to be devoted to the French side, so mm -hmm. it'll be a mirror image. And, and um, the other half will be the okay. Island of France. And a mirror image, so it's going to be fun to do. Yeah, that's lovely. I, I yeah, really fun. I think the the cultural element is really important as well. So yeah. it's great that you're highlighting yeah. that. Um, and then kind of moving on to your own creative processes and journeys. I was mm -hmm. just wondering if there's any other creatives or artists that inspired your particular journey or the path that you chose, I suppose. Um, so yeah, I might ask. Caroline, you're nodding, so I might okay. ask you first oh, if you're... It's really, really difficult to narrow that down I know, because I think that I know. Um, there are so many great artists, you know, both in the past and yeah. sort of contemporary and so on. Um, and I think um, as visual artists, you're always feeding off everything you see, actually. Mm -hmm. There's always something. But um, I mean, for me, I think um, Turner. Um, uh, and then if you follow that on with somebody like... A, a painter like Monet, particularly the, mm -hmm. the, the later series, um, the, the, at the end of his life he went quite blind but actually that made his paintings more beautiful because they, they progressively became more and more abstract and yeah. uh, just absolutely beautiful. Um, and then um, abstract artists like Cy Twimley or Joan Mitchell mm -hmm. uh, I really love. And then sculpture as well, I've got a, um, I, I, at art college I did sort of a, could never settle for one thing yeah. so I'm I wouldn't describe myself essentially just as a painter but I do double and um, so sculpture sculpture is, a, is an influence I loved Giacometti um, Barbara Hepworth um, and uh, Brancusi there's a sort of purity of form in in, in Brancusi and um, Hepworth's work um, African textiles that just are amazing the the rhythm the color they're just glorious um, and also the, the ceramics and sculptures from from the African continent um, and then uh, the craftsmanship uh, medieval art just across everything from from the churches to paintings to mm -hmm. ceramics uh, yeah. I, I love the kind of the simplicity but the, um, there's a naivety to it, but also just very, be just very beautiful. And of course, early Renaissance, more than later Renaissance. I'll, um, so people like uh, Giotto and uh, Frangelico, and uh, um, and then Rembrandt's etchings. Just had to throw that one in because they're just. <laughs> I think I've asked you a very difficult question. Yeah, they're just amazing. It's really just, it's, it it's is, difficult. And, yeah, um, it's hard to pick like one yeah, inspiration. Islamic so. tiles are just I know. absolutely beautiful. Uh, Byzantine um, mosaics, all of those sort of things. <laughs> so yeah, lots and lots and lots of different things. And then uh, writers. Uh, I'm, I've gone back to reading Virginia Woolf at the moment. I'm, I have to say that I tend to favour women writers. I, I know. It just happens. I think there's yeah. a voice there that you recognise. So Virginia Woolf and Maya Angelou um, and uh, uh, Annie Erno, who won the Nobel Literary Prize yes. and whose book, the, um, the Years, is just absolutely outstanding. Just so I'm just throwing that's, that one in there. Yeah, that's great yeah. to get, you know, recommendations yeah. as well for people if you might be looking to get into reading. and. Um, female authors as well. It's always yeah. nice to give them a plug. And um, what about you, Mitch? Do you have any inspiration? I do, like share? and I can kind of home in. There are very definite ones that really m made a huge impact on me. I think when I was a child, Giotto actually. My dad had this massive tome of um, art, you know, art masterpieces, and I remember looking mm. at those, thinking, "Oh, that's what I want." And I had no <laughs> idea what it was, but it was definitely Giotto. That was a very, very mm. yeah. early memory for me. Amazing. Um, Bryce Marden, uh, I went actually flew to New York especially to see one of his his, his shows because <laughs> he just made such an impact on me uh, at the Whitechapel. He had a huge ret a retrospective show at the Whitechapel, which was just mind blowing. And of course, Rothko at the Tate. I mean, that mm. was just one of those Rothko. amazing experiences when you're a teenager. You, just, you know, if you haven't experienced a Rothko before and you go into that room and it's, ju it's just incredible actually. Yeah. Uh, but one of the one of the, the, the artists that really I think has inf influenced me the most is Bridget Riley. 
I think she's very, very undervalued. She's a great artist and she's brilliant at writing on art. If you haven't read anything by I her, haven't, no. she is a brilliant, brilliant writer great, on art. Thank and you. I just well, wish you. she was more valued because, um, you know, I think as a woman artist, yeah, she's up there, but she, she should have more um, respect paid to her because I think she's just brilliant. I think she's our best painter, actually, to be honest, but she, you know, anyway. Wow. Okay, thank you. And, for, um, yeah. Also, I think I have to, I have to pay, 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 um, homage to our foundation teachers actually wouldn't you yeah. agree oh. I mean, they, were, they were amazing it was just, it was a fantastic foundation course at Maidenhead run by Matt Comsieu who actually lives in West Cork now yes. but I know and Gary Woodley it was very strict and they, they expected a lot of us which I think is actually really really important when you're a young, young art student yeah. they just made us work they gave <laughs> us that rigor and yeah. that yeah. I and mean, one of the things that I always remember Max saying was uh, uh, so you think you're here, um, you, you've chosen to do art because you think it's going to be an easier option. If that's the case, there's the door. Mm. Oh, <laughs> you're, that was, you're not getting away with anything. You're not there. getting away with anything. Yeah. And, my, and my printmaking teacher the same. They're very disciplined, very um, single-minded. She was called Dorothea White. She's absolutely amazing. She did all, the, she, she's a master printmaker, and so she would make prints for people like um, uh, Freud. She, she and Mark Balakjian, her husband, were Freud, Freud, uh, Lucian Freud's printmakers. Wow. They were amazing. They Crazy. were such great teachers. And I would say my mania for tidying up my studio comes from Dorothea because she was so disciplined. <laughs> you know, she really instilled that. You know, you've got to just you know be disciplined and you know clear up after yourself. Yeah. And you know, and that's funny when it comes to art. Um, you think of the freedom of the process and things, but yeah. I suppose the discipline is a really important as well. Involved. Huge discipline. And I think that that kind of ties into one of the questions that I wanted to ask you about how to get out of a creative slump. Is it the discipline of maybe writing something or painting something every day, even if you don't have inspiration? Is that where it comes from? Or do you have to seek experiences where you get Yeah, inspired? showing up. You just, you just mm. have to show up. Okay. That's, for, for me, that's, that's the most important thing, yeah. just be there. Um, and also looking at things. I mean, um, there's a story that um, Rilke, the poet, was really, he, he, used to, he, was, he, he worked for Rodin. He was Rodin's secretary at one point. Okay. And he told Rodin he was really stuck. stuck. And Rodin just said, go, and, go to the zoo, go, go to the zoo and look <laughs> at the animals. And he came back with a masterpiece of a poem. Mm -hmm. you know, so I think right. actually looking at, looking at the world, looking at other people's work and showing up really, yeah. that's, that's it for me. I, I think that uh, there's, it's not just about the production. I do think there's times mm -hmm. that that slump is actually necessary. I think it's the way I've, I've yeah. come to, to, to rationalise it or to accept it because it's, it's terrible when it happens because you think, I'm never going to be able to paint again. I can't draw. I've got no <laughs> ideas. I'm just dead. That's it. It's over. And it's a really, really <laughs> awful time. But the way I've come to, to accept it now is, to, is a little bit like comparing it to, to nature. So in the winter, when everything, all the leaves have come off the trees and seemingly they're dead, actually all the work is going on in the roots. They're mm -hmm. digging deep, they're strengthening. And that's the way I look at it now and that's how I comfort myself. Yeah, that's myself. a really good analogy yeah. actually. Yeah. That's a really, really it good really analogy. It really is because you can, you can actually get really panicked when you feel... Oh, that's the worst thing. Panic yeah. is the worst thing. I think, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think boredom is actually very good for you actually. Uh, you know, boredom, mm -hmm. being stuck is actually a good place to be sometimes because... Yeah. Um, things start to happen that are not expected I think it's the unexpected that kind of yeah. will sometimes uh, spark something that's off very true too. and just being able to sit with discomfort yeah and that's really hard when you have your mobile and mm. oh, it's TV impossible. and books it's really hard to just sit and be because that's often where I find personally that creative thoughts it's, come when you yeah, you totally, let them flow totally <laughs> yeah. right yeah. yeah I think there's also an expectation that you should always be productive that you only valued if you're mm. involved in producing something you've got to show something for yeah. you know oh, for being absolutely. here um, yeah. and actually daydreaming is not valid oh, daydreaming and doing is, nothing I think daydreaming is, is essential it's yeah, absolutely that's essential absolutely that's essential. where I, I nourish myself in, in mm. the daydreams mm. it, yeah. it just suddenly I come, I come back alive mm. if I allow myself to do that. Yeah. But as far as the writing goes, actually, I belong to this fantastic group, the London Writers um, okay. Salon. Mm -hmm. It's a, a Zoom group. I did it during lockdown. You, you log on at various times of the day, eight o'clock, twelve, and seven, I think, and you sit there for an hour. You all sit there for an hour, and you can. You, <laughs> and, and, and the premise is, you can sit and write, or do nothing. 
but you okay. can't do anything else. You either sit and do nothing or you Ooh. write. It's absolutely brilliant. I love that. It is really it's brilliant. It's like having an accountability yeah, partner. Yeah, exactly. It is brilliant. Yeah. It's kind of got me through actually sometimes, you know, and uh, there's something very nice about just sitting. Yeah. It's like being in a room with people. Yeah. Who, yeah, it, it's great. It's a very, very good, if you don't know it, I mean, I would really, and if you're a writer, mm -hmm. I'd really, I would really recommend okay. signing up with them because it's free. It's actually, it's free as well. I might know. actually take that on no, board. No, it's brilliant. <laughs> it is actually brilliant. London yeah. Writer Salon, little plug for them Thank there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I really liked what you said there, Caroline, that you, it's that feeling of always having to be productive because I think that's such a problem at the moment yeah. and um, it's very fast paced and it's mm. hard to, you know, let the let the softer, more creative thoughts come up when you, you're constantly looking for something absolutely. from it. You need time to reflect on things. You can't mm -hmm. always just be mm. going forward. There has to be points, uh, pauses mm -hmm. where you actually reflect on what you've done yeah. and, you know, decide which, because any yeah. any activity, I suppose, generates a number of possibilities, yeah. and I think you need that pause to reflect on well, where to, where next. Yes. And, um, and sometimes you don't get to choose that pause. And sometimes <laughs> you don't get to choose. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. No, that's really inspiring. So thank you for sharing. Um, and then I suppose I wanted to ask you if you had just a piece of advice for a young person. A young woman in particular who wants to break into the art industry maybe in West Cork or maybe in London or France or um, how would you maybe have the self-belief and the confidence to to think that you could do it and you could maybe join a group or showcase your work if you're you know if it's not something that you're you feel you're good enough for yet per se well, none of us did feel we're good enough. That's the thing. I think mm -hmm. I think that's what it's really important to realise that I think nobody thinks they're good enough. So, you know, don't don't beat yourself around the head thinking you're not good enough because nobody mm -hmm. does. That's that. I think that's that's part of being a creative person. Actually, I think if we okay. were, if we were all swanning around <laughs> thinking we we're fantastic, we wouldn't get any work done. I think it's that kind of you know the grit in the oyster that keeps us going. It's that you have to keep a balance between thinking you're not good enough and actually getting the work done yes. you know yeah um it's very interesting i mean i'm not sure i've actually done it myself you know i think it's very early days i think i'm of myself as an emerging artist still so i think really the most important thing is actually just to keep going i would say okay. just keep going <laughs> try to believe yourself tell yourself nobody's breaking your arms to do this you can give up at any time that you want but having said that it's the best life in the world. If you're a creative person, there is no choice, actually, <laughs> I think. You know, it's a hard life yeah. for some people, for most of us, I would say. There are some very lucky people, very talented people who have, you know, who get paid what we all should be paid for what we do. But mm -hmm. I think it's um, it's the only life, actually. It's, it's you know, I feel very, very lucky. I, I feel very lucky being a creative person. That's Even amazing. though we're kind of scrabbling around most of the time, <laughs> yeah. trying to make With a living. With constant um, imposter exactly. syndrome as well. Oh, God, yeah. That's try and get over that. Oh, my God, that's the worst thing. But yeah. we all have it. That's yeah. the thing. I think it's actually you have to realise um, and try and get a little network going. It's yeah. actually, you know, it's really important to, to, to have a support system with other writers or other artists. Mm -hmm. um, it's easier hunting the pack, basically. <laughs> yeah, basically. 100%, because I think coming with that productive, uh, hyper-individual, um, kind of neoliberal attitude yeah. that's around at the moment. It's kind of like you have to go it alone, and you know, yeah, yeah. But it's it's all about well, the group, and that's what I love about the magazine. Mm -hmm. I just love bringing people together. It's just yeah. been the best thing about it. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of introducing people mm -hmm. to each other. And it's I'm, not competitive. It's I, just no. everyone supporting. Yeah. and, and yeah. the readings I think are very important. I I organise readings throughout the year. Yeah. Um, hopefully um, in Cork um, here. But I, I think it's so it's so important that people are able to read their own work and for mm -hmm. other people to hear writers read. It's that it's very very exciting hear, hearing writers read it their is. own work actually. So yeah, yeah, join love group. it. <laughs> love it. Thank you, Mitch and Caroline. Um, well, it's sort impact? of really um, not much more to say. I mean, I think yeah. Mitch sort of established most of it. I think yes, keep going. You know, footpaths are made by walking. You just kind of put one foot in front of the other, and each time you kind That's of, it. it just gets, you learn something. It's mm -hmm. a learning process. So I don't think you ever get to the destination. <laughs> I think it's definitely it's definitely a journey. Okay. Um, it's a journey that you, you, you know, you spend a lot of time on your own, and you mm -hmm. have to definitely be a one woman band. You know, you're doing everything from not just producing, but promoting, networking, and um, all of that is, is part of it as well. There's moments of frustration, there's moments of 
intense work which you feel is not getting anywhere or is not being recognised. But I, I really believe that there's no work that's ever wasted. That mm -hmm. I think even if it's put aside for a bit, it'll re-emerge somewhere else yeah. and, and then you might have it'll be stronger because something else has happened in between and mm -hmm. so it's it's definitely a journey um Can not I'll to sorry not to compare yourself too much to others as well to try and yeah keep your 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 your, in, your own vision because your own, your vision will develop as a result of you being true to yourself mm -hmm. i think and just maintaining that and yeah and whilst you you know you, you might uh like other people's work or respect other people's work or or, or share a collaboration um it's it, it should never be more than learning from one yeah. another mm. Um, and ch making the choices that are right for you, basically, within that collaboration. Yeah, no, that's and brilliant advice. I think yeah. one of the most important things, actually, is allowing yourself to fail. It's so important to yeah. allow yourself to fail it's and hard, not though. feel... It is hard, but I think, you know, to expect yourself to be successful in every every piece of work you make mm -hmm. is actually the road to nowhere. So allow yourself to fail. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that it's, takes a lot of pressure off, actually. It's mm. It's the only way to learn actually because when you when you don't <laughs> succeed at something that's when you ask yourself questions why didn't that work what what yeah so if you can make that a constructive kind of uh, questioning rather than yeah. a negative one beating yourself up about you know so you have to get over that it has to be a constructive evaluation yeah but it's it is the only only way you're going to and learn does that come with time that being able to tune out the comparison and the kind of negative um the negative feelings towards failure does that come with experience and the more failure that you have? I'm not sure. I think, you know, actually it's hard. It's very, very hard. I think yeah. you have to remind yourself constantly. I mean, okay. I'm always reminding myself, even now, you know, I've been doing it for years. Mm -hmm. You still think, uh, the problem is our society is so success driven. That's the problem. Yeah. You're kind of fighting that all the time. So, you know, just, I think you have to kind of just give yourself space to fail. It's yeah. the only way to be creative. I think. Failure can 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 be a very creative thing, actually. <laughs> yeah. I know it sounds really paradoxical, but actually, you know, I think it's really important to be able to fail and and. That's yeah. where the good things happen. Exactly. Often. Yeah. yeah. It is. Yeah. You sort of dust yourself down, yeah. and you actually pick up the pieces, and you just put them together in a different way, and yeah. you move on. And mm. you just have to get on with that's it. it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great advice. Thank you both. <laughs> Um, so where can people find <gasps> well, find you on social media? Um, you go ahead, Carol, you, you go first. Where can, where can um, we find you? <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I've got, um, just quite simply, a website under my name and uh, Instagram profile and Facebook profile, so carolineboyfield.com. Uh, oh, okay, lovely. Just all in one. Is your and Instagram Caroline Instagram Boyfield? Instagram Caroline Boyfield as well. Um, it's so nice having a unique name that you can do well, that. Well, right, yes, it, it does help, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, and Mitch, where can we find you? Um, Eight Cork Road is the gallery, lovely. and you can see Caroline's lovely work right now. Yeah. Um, that's the, the HQ for uh, Swerve. Mm -hmm. um, and me really. Um, Instagram, um, website, swerve, um, magazine org. Mitch Moroni. So great, lovely. And where can people buy Swerve? <gasps> oh, that's the most important question, isn't it? Um, <laughs> well, we've actually sold out the first print run, which is brilliant. Yay, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, week. Isn't that great? Oh. I know. I, 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 <laughs> I'm really proud of I you. Know. <laughs> amazing. I, I've only um, I only printed a hundred because it's actually astronomically expensive to print that's the problem yeah there's a lot um, of paper in yeah the, in and the, it was yeah. a bumper bumper edition i just thought well let's just go for it mm -hmm. i mean i i didn't i wanted to print a, what i wanted so yeah i just went for it so hence it's very very um expensive to print mm -hmm. uh but i don't regret it i just think i'm so so happy with the result um you can buy it from uh, you'll be able to buy it from waterstones in a couple of weeks okay um the uh i'm gonna have to get the print run done so um Ilan, the Bantry Bookshop and the O'Connell Gallery. There's a beautiful, beautiful gallery in, in Clonakilty called the O'Connell Gallery and he's taking some, which is great. Um, and it, most importantly, actually, I think, because of the way things are going, I mean, I'm very, very keen to keep a print magazine. Mm -hmm. I think it's essential, actually. Yeah. But we also have an online edition. So you can yes. you can log on to the website and um, get an online edition of Swerve. And can Swerve you, 1 and 2. Oh, I was just going to ask, yeah. can you access both Swerve Yes, you online? can. That's brilliant. Okay, thank you so much. No, thank, thank you. you. Do you have anything Brilliant. else to add? <laughs> <laughs> no, except to thank you. And um, it's been lovely. It's, it's been, been really, yeah. really, really nice. Really thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thanks for listening to the Southern Stars Creative Conversations podcast series. This episode was produced and presented by Emer O'Dwyer. For more episodes like this, make sure to subscribe to the podcast wherever you are listening and check out our southernstar.ie forward slash podcasts for our other series, including Southern Star editor Siobhan Cronin's From A to C series, which focuses on sea swimming in West Cork and beyond.